In this video, I'm going to share with you and break down some of the basics of the principles of the Cover 4 quarters in Madden 22. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel. And guys, since the EA's last title update, with uh, some of the changes that they made to zone coverage, there are some things that are improved, but in honesty, they broke a lot of the deep zone coverage. And that's where Cover 4 match really comes in, I think, as being one of the better coverages in the game that we're able to get right now. And so I wanted to break down just a quick little video on how the rules of quarters works against two by two spread. Now, real quick before we go into the rest of the video, I do want to let you know that my match game plan is officially live over at my website. So if you want to get the entire match defense, we show you how to stop, pretty much we show you how the rules change and adapt formation to formation, how to use those rules to your advantage to get key stops against even the best of the best offenses in the game like Gun Bunch and Trips Tight End and um, U-Trips and stuff like that. So if you want to get access to all of that material, again, all you have to do is sign up for my membership. It's 10 bucks a month. I'm going to put a link to it in the comment section below and in the description. If you want to just get the individual game plan, I have a link for that as well. But I would highly recommend you get my true fan membership. The reason why is because you get access, unlimited access, to every ebook that I release in the season. So you get access to all nine ebooks that I've already released on offense and defense. And then you'll also get access to all additional ebooks as long as your subscription is active. You can cancel it at any time. There's no, there's no uh, long-term commitment. So 10 bucks a month, if you want to get it, go down in the description and grab it. Now we're going to be talking today, again, about the cover four quarters defense. And I'm going to be showing with you a special little blitzing concept as well from this. Now I'm in the dime two, three, six out of the Baltimore playbook. I think this is one of the better formations in the game for several different reasons. But we're going to dive into how this works, uh, how quarters works against spread formation. Now, the way quarters works for, for this is, in essence, you might think, well, it looks like cover four palms, and it looks like cover four drop, but it's not. Uh, cover four quarters is a match defense. What that means is it's a match zone man defense. Depending on the types of routes that they run, the players are going to adapt to the routes, and they're either going to leave them in zone, or they're going to play them in man to man, or they're going to pass them off together as one unit. It's my favorite way to play defense, and the reason why is because of two reasons. Number one, it's very unpredictable in terms of the pro players in the world. They're not, they don't see this a lot, to be honest. They see a lot of zone drop defense. So when they see someone that has a good match scheme, it can sometimes throw off some of their reads. It's a little bit more deceptive, in my opinion. Um, and then secondly, the reason that I really like this defense is because it adapts to the formation, it adapts to the routes, and it forces your opponent to have to use very specific route combinations to be able to be successful. Without further ado, let's dive into this video. So the first thing that I like to recommend to people is if you are playing your quarters and you see here that I have this thing, it's called press quarters. In that situation, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and back off the corners, individually back off the corners, because now it's gonna change the rules. When they're pressed, they're gonna play what's called meg coverage, which means man everywhere they go. But when they're backed off, they're going to play traditional quarters. And that's what I wanted to break down in this video. So the way traditional quarters works is that I've often heard it said that if you can count to three, you can play quarters. What that means is quarters uses a numbering system outside and inside that tells you what you're going to do or who you're going to be playing in, in relationship with. So, for example, in this video, you're going to see Jimmy Smith here on the outside. This outside corner is playing relative to the number one receiver to the left. Well, the number one receiver to the left is Mike Evans because he's the first outside receiver in the formation, or the most outside receiver in the formation. So if Mike Evans runs a vertical route, and what a vertical route is, is basically a seven to 10 yard route, right, or more that goes vertical. So it could be a 10 yard in route, a 10 yard out route, a post route, a uh, curl route, uh, a streak route, right, a corner route, a post route, all that stuff. If he runs any of those, then Jimmy Smith will take him man to man. But if he does not, let's say he runs a smoke screen or a drag route or a five yard out cut or a five yard in cut, then Jimmy Smith's not gonna worry about him. Instead, he's gonna turn his attention to the number two receiver, which is Chris Godwin. So let me illustrate how this is gonna work. What you're gonna see is I'm gonna put Mike Evans on the outside on a smoke screen, and I'm gonna put Godwin on a uh, little corner route. And what you're going to see is he's going to go to the smoke screen, but then he's going to, oh, that's not vertical. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take that corner route. 
It's one of the best ways, in my personal opinion, to defend the Smash concept, one of the most popular concepts year in and year out, especially from the, the gun spread. Now, let's say that Mike Evans, let's run that same route combination, but this time we're going to put Mike Evans on a, uh, a, a 10-yard curl. And what you're going to see now is, I'm going to back him off so he plays the proper rules. Now he's got that 10-yard curl, so that's a vertical route, so he's going to stay on him. And you see he doesn't go to the corner, but that's obviously not a great route combo because there's not great spacing. So that's how the number one corner works in quarters. The number two uh, receiver is in relationship to the safety in quarters. Quarters being four, right? So four uh, relationships across the board. So as you can see here, Elliot is playing in relationship to Godwin with the same rules that um, Jimmy Smith had. And those rules are if Godwin goes 10 yards and cuts inside or 10 yards and cuts outside, or he goes 10 yards and continues to go vertical, then Elliot is going to take him man to man. If if Godwin goes on like a dig or a zig or an out cut and it's under 10, more like five yards or less, like a drag or slant or something, then typically Elliot is going to release him to the underneath defenders and he's going to then turn his attention to the number one receiver and see if that number one receiver is running some kind of in cutting route like a skinny post or something to that effect. So let me show you what's going to happen here. I'm going to take Godwin. We're just going to run the route combo you see on the screen. And what you're going to see is, well, he's running he's running vertical. Yep, he's running vertical. I've got to go take that. And as you can see, he takes that man to man. And I will also say that the match coverage puts these guys in a pretty unique position, in my opinion, to make some pretty good plays. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put Godwin on a non-vertical route. And we're going to put Mike Evans on a dig. And I want you to watch that left side safety, see how he plays in relationship to him. He comes inside just like that, and he takes that five or that ten yard dig. Again, you got to understand the relationships between the players. Now, the right side of the field pretty much works exactly the same as the left side of the field. Clark is playing relative to Gronk. Peters is playing relative to Brown, and so that's how the quarters coverage works. If Gronk goes ten yards to the vertical, um, if whether he cuts inside or outside, Clark's going to take him man to man. But if Gronk doesn't do that, let's say he drags or he uh, whips out to the outside, then Clark's going to turn his attention to the new relationship, which is with number one. And that's where Peters, like I said before, if Brown goes to the vertical, inside, outside cut at 10 yards, he's taking him. Or if he stays vertical, he's going to take him. But if Brown does like a smoke screen or something like that, then he's going to he's going to release him to uh, he's going to release him to this quarter flat defender, and then he turns his attention to Mikowski. Now, how do these three players at the bottom work? Well, these guys are responsible for, in quarters, these guys are primarily responsible for defending the underneath of the field. Now, I said if you could count to three, you could play quarters coverage. Well, Patrick Queen is in what's called a three-rec hook. That stands for three-receiver hook curl. What that essentially means is he's going to open up to the three-receiver side. If the third receiver goes vertical, then, in my opinion, Queen has to take him. Here's why. If I send everybody vertical including the running back okay I want you to watch how this works so I'm going to send everybody vertical including the running back and I want you to watch what happens you see that three receiver hook see what he does he kind of dumbs out to be honest he doesn't play his proper principle and as you can see that running back can be open so a popular way that people especially if you're running gun spread someone likes to beat this coverage is they'll do something to this effect they might do something like this and maybe throw a drag on the field Okay, and if they do something like that, that route combination, what you should see is that three receiver hook is responsible for the running back on that vertical. But as you see right there, see right there that time he does take him properly. And my, my opinion is that should be your user on this play because that's your primary um, guy that will kind of dumb out and spread when you're facing two by two. I did not say that that should be your user in three by one. We actually break that down in the guide where we teach you exactly who your user should be, what you should be looking for, formation to formation, because it changes. Remember, this defense is adaptable to the to the formation that it's facing. So my recommendation will be to use the three rep hook, and what the three rep hook is responsible for is I want you to watch here. I'm going to put Gronkowski on a drag. I just want you to watch what happens. You're going to see the three rep hook is going to match the drag. He's going to carry the drag, and then he's going to deliver the drag to the quarter flat. So the three-rep hook defender is the person that is essentially responsible for matching the crossing routes, dra or, um, 
uh, and then carrying them across the middle of the formation and delivering them. He delivers them from quarter flat to quarter flat. That's the, the basic gist of how he's going to work unless number three goes vertical and number three to a side, right? Obviously, Bernard's not the number three, number three receiver on this team, but in this example, to the right side of the field, you have number one, which is Antonio Brown, you have number two, which is Gronkowski, and then you have number three, which is Bernard. So the three receiver hook is playing in relationship with that running back because on the left side, cover four quarters is what's called a split field coverage. And what that essentially means is they divide the field in half, which is why Godwin is not considered the number three receiver and Gronkowski is considered the number four receiver. Godwin is considered the number two receiver to the left. Evans, the number one receiver to the left. There's no third receiver to the left. Now, a quick little pro tip on this. If you take gun spread as any indication, if they go to five wide, guess who the biggest problem in a five wide set is going to be for your defense? That guy right there. So this back is you know, a great person to pay attention to. If you have an extra player from your D-line that you're willing to put in coverage, I would put, put him in coverage on the back because this guy right here is the guy that's going to mess up everything. He is the guy that, to me, is the hardest because the three-receiver hook doesn't really deal with him the, the way that, in my opinion, he kind of should if you're playing true quarters rules. So that's how cover four quarters works against gun spread. If you want to get my entire match defensive game plan, I would really, really encourage you to do it. It's probably the best piece of work I've done all year in terms of actually breaking down the coverages, how to use them, how to adjust them, how to tweak them, how to tailor these coverage schemes to being able to shut down the gun bunch, the trips tied in, the best offenses in the game, and you can get it all right now for just ten bucks. The beauty of this is it could also the beauty of this is it could also work out of several different formations. I like to run the three three five will, but I showed you this today out of the two three six. You can also do the three three five Sam or the two four five uh, even or the nickel normal or the big nickel over G. There's a lot of defenses that you can run this scheme with, and that's the beauty of match. Very adaptable, very adjustable, and very um, almost amoeba-ish because of how it molds itself to the situation. So I would really encourage you to check out that match defensive guide. Again, I'm going to put a link to that in the comment section below. If you want to get it, it's on sale for just 10 bucks a month, and then you can cancel at any time. If you just want the ebook itself, I'll put a link down there for that as well. But I would really recommend checking out the membership. We release, uh, we've released nine ebooks. We've got a ton of exclusive tips, breakdowns on like one, four, six, and dollar and stuff like that. So if you want to get access to all of that content, 10 bucks a month, and like I said, you can cancel at any time. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you guys later.